medicine in Islam. There's a very long history of medicine in the Islamic world, going back as far as the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He recommended various things that people can eat and drink which are beneficial to the health, as well as things that they can do which are also beneficial. In this short video, I'll be giving some examples of things that the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentioned that people can do which are beneficial to their health. There's a great emphasis on learning in Islam for both men and women, and during the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, there was Rufaida, may Allah be pleased with her, who started the first medical center in Islam. It was basically similar to a military hospital. So during battles, a group of Muslim women would take the men off the battlefield and take them to the tent for treatment. There's a lot of emphasis on personal hygiene in Islam, and Muslims are encouraged to take a bath at least once a week. This might sound obvious, but as recent as the 19th century during the Victorian era in the UK, people used to take a bath only about once a year. The Prophet peace be upon him recommended using a miswak, which is a piece of wood and it was used similar to a toothbrush for cleaning the teeth. And nowadays they also have toothpaste that is made of miswak flavor as well. Muslims aren't required to fast during the month of Ramadan as a religious obligation, but it also has various medical benefits. And nowadays fasting is also used in medical terms, such as for doing blood tests. Likewise, the Prophet peace be upon him recommended fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. And this is similar to what people have found in recent times, known as the 5-2 diet, where people need to fast on two non-consecutive days from dawn to sunset, which is very similar to what the Prophet peace be upon him already recommended 1400 years ago. The Prophet peace be upon him also recommended hijama, which is also known as bloodletting, or in the West as Chinese cupping. Although there is no evidence to suggest this is actually from China and might have been used as far back as the time of the ancient Egyptians. The Prophet peace be upon him recommended doing the hijama on the 17th, 19th or 21st of the Islamic calendar which is based on the moon. And this is useful in modern terms as well as the moon also has an influence on the high tide and it affects blood pressure. Like Jewish people, Muslims also circumcise their males which is something that the Prophet peace be upon him recommended and in recent times in a 2015 report, the World Health Organization also suggested that performing circumcision can reduce the risk of diseases such as HIV virus diseases by about 60%. That's why according to a BBC report of 2015, there are plans in place to circumcise men and boys in Uganda. The Prophet peace be upon him advised that if somebody hears of the plague, they should not go there. But if they are already in the land, they should not leave. Although we do not have any major plagues in the world at the moment, this is still relevant as there are still cases of the plague around the world and this suggests that people should not move from one place to another to avoid infecting other people. The Prophet peace be upon him explained that if there is some water and a fly falls inside it, somebody should dip the fly all the way inside, then take it out and throw it out. That's because one wing has the disease and the other has the cure for it. This can be applied in other areas as well, such as with snake bites. When somebody is bitten by a snake, quite often, people find the antidote for the snake bite from the snake itself. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel.